Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Know Your Gear Live. It's Friday, three o'clock p.m. my time, and uh, today is episode ninety-nine. That's right. Next week will be one hundred uh, episodes of live QA. What I'm excited about is next week is two things happening simultaneously. If you could uh, just imagine how this would work out next Friday. The channel will have its 100th episode of Know Your Gear QA, and it'll also reach 200,000 subscribers. We're right at the cusp of it right now, and we're in line to do that. Uh, so that's two big things. Uh, if you guys have suggestions of something we can do next week, I have a couple ideas myself, and uh, I'd love to, but I'd love your guys' feedback because um, sometimes you guys have way better ideas than me. <laughs> in fact, a lot of times you do, and that's why I kind of rely on you all. Um, I hope everyone's week was great. My week was crazy busy. <laughs> this is the busiest week I've ever had, ever. <laughs> um, I have. Uh, this is took me back to basic training days of getting up at uh, you know four in the morning and going to bed at like one in the morning. Uh, just it was great, but it was great, way funner than being yelled at by a drill sergeant. So uh, I'll go over all the stuff. Of course, this week I have the list of stuff to talk about. I got questions. I'm sure you guys have questions to ask and, and talk about. Uh, and uh, and we'll get into it uh, with uh, with a pretty couple, couple of things, a uh, couple of easy things. Um, ah, but Mosey says it's 10 p.m. where he is. So yeah, time zones are different. I have my own time zone. Arizona just is, does its own thing. We heard our own thing for better or worse. Okay. Um, so no, somebody says no sound. I, you should have sound. <laughs> so we'll hopefully won't have a re <laughs> mistake again. Last, like last week, I'm not coughing this week, so I should be good. But my voice is hoarse, uh, because every night this week I was at a loud club, uh, and I've been yelling a lot. So, okay. Um, before I get into some questions, I'll get into some, there's about 300 of us popping on. So we'll make some cool announcements real quick. The first thing I want to announce is something exciting uh, happening tomorrow. If you live in the Phoenix area, uh, Larry Mitchell will be doing a free clinic at Zim's Guitars tomorrow at 4 p.m. I'll be there to hang out uh, and watch him. It's a very, it's a small shop. So understand it's going to be a very quaint experience, but it's it's just to have fun. There's no agenda behind this. Um, so it's it's just going to be great. We'll make it happen. If we can't fit, I'm sure we'll all just walk down the street to the nearest bar. <laughs> so um, just anybody who wants to join, I, I plan to be there. Obviously, Lara will be there to do the clinic. And uh, so I will put a link in the description right now in the video uh, when, uh, when it re-uploads in an hour. So you guys have the address and all the information. If you guys can join us, please, please feel free. It's free, by the way. There's no charge for that. Okay. Um, hey, Deep Space, Deep Space Blonde says, Woo! First ever KYG Live for you, for me. That's great. I'm glad you could join us. It's great every week to have people just kind of hang out with talk guitars. My favorite thing to talk about. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Let's see. Uh, okay. What else do we have? A lot of you guys just have qu uh, not questions, but just stuff you're just letting me know. So I'll try and share. Um, we have a pin question. So give me a second on that one. Nathan just says, how's it going? It's going great, Nathan. You think I should do my updates of the week? I mean, I know a lot of you know what I'm going to talk about. If you follow Instagram, you know exactly what happened this week. It was the craziest week. Uh, Jimmy Green said he had a new guitar day this week and he picked up an Ibanez uh so he says as prestige model model i think you're saying az az i you know what i picked them up at the nam show and played them again god those guitars are good <laughs> uh, you know what i'm glad you got one it's it's awesome they're they built the next you know what it is the next feel really really nice they're not too thin they're not too thick uh they're kind of a u-shaped little flatter they're not the c shape so really nice. It didn't remind me of a Sir guitar so much or a, a, like a Strat or the Ibanez Thin Neck. I, I thought it was really cool. Some of you guys that have them out there, you might be able to relate and tell us what neck it's kind of best fits like. 
Let's see. Uh, Laura Dar Drother says, I rushed to buy my T-shirt before the 100K subscribers because you said you'd retire the old design. Yep, we retired that old design. Uh, we haven't done it since. We don't plan to ever do it again. It's a slightly different design than the, uh, than the one we have now, um, which is cool. And uh, yeah, so there we... Uh, we, uh, <laughs> I might as well tell you, we have, uh, there's a Chinese, there's a Chinese company knocking off the original design, uh, KYG t-shirts. And then that brought up the whole, should we release it? Cause they're, they're knocking it off. I thought it was silly that they're knocking it off, but you know, as you've seen in the videos with them cu counterfeiting strings, they'll counterfeit anything. Um, but we're never going to do it. We're never going to bring the original logo back on a t-shirt design. Uh, we just use the newer one that we have now. They're, they're similar, but they're different. Obviously it has my signature on it now and stuff. We did that just because the channel hitting a hundred thousand subscribers, which is such a big deal. Obviously 200,000 subscribers is a big deal. It's all a big deal, but a hundred thousand subscribers, not just cause you get the plaque. It just seems to be a milestone. And I kind of knew deep down that once you hit that kind of status, the channel will never be the small community we once had. And, and I love the community we have now, but I wanted to kind of honor everyone who, who kept my momentum going, uh, at the beginning. So, all right. Um, David says he's the first time here and that's great. I'm glad you're here, David. Let me get to some of the questions. Let me hit them real quick. Okay. So the first question we have is from Bruce and Nope, I'm sorry, it's Matt. Bruce, you'll be in a second. Matt says, hey, Phil, I just got a PRS SE Custom. That's the import 22 Semi Hollow, uh, expecting to upgrade. Uh, if it was if it was you, how would you allocate roughly $200 in upgrades? Thanks. Okay, the uh, PRS SE Custom 22 Semi Hollow, um, 200 bucks. I mean, here's the thing. I like locking keys. I know that's kind of a broken record. Uh, since you have the custom, you should have a graphite nut. So I wouldn't upgrade the nut. If you had the SE standard, you would have the plastic nut. I would upgrade the nut. Uh, I like the bridge. Actually, it's the same bridge. They think they put on the, uh, on my S twos, which I use. And I, I like that bridge a lot. So I think I would upgrade to the locking keys, um, and pickups. And at 200 bucks, that's going to be a really hard thing to upgrade both those things. But if I had a choice, I'd upgrade the tuning keys. I think the guitar sound and play fantastic as it is. Locking keys to me is just about restringing a little faster convenience. If that's not a bigger, if that's not a big deal to you, uh, then I would upgrade pickups and 200 bucks. You could buy pretty much any great pickup out there. Uh, Bruce says, uh, I've been enjoying using some lighter gauge strings. I'm a Les Paul. What pitfalls can I see moving to smaller uh, gauge strings? There's not really a pitfall, Bruce. Um, uh, Paul Gilbert once said this in an interview, and I thought it was very uh, enlightening, and I've kind of found it to be true for myself, too. He said that when he's not on tour, he tends to play nine gauge strings. And then when he starts the tour, he starts it on nines. And then as he's, he's playing all the time, he puts the tens on and the elevens on. I find the same thing to be true for me. Uh, the way I like to look at it is like kind of like working out with a weight set. You know, if you work out every day, you keep you know, keep racking up the weight set. But then if you take a few months off or a year off or two years off, um, when you go back, you're not going to start where you left off. That doesn't make any sense. I do the same thing. If I don't play very often, I'll lighten up the gauge of strings a little bit, make it a little easier for my hands. Um, but right now, because I've been playing so much, it's just I've, I've never played this much in such a short period of time in the last like five months. Uh, we're normally, I love nines on guitars. I'm all tens right now. I don't think I have any nines on any guitars right now. Um, just because, you know, you want, you want your bends to feel, you want to feel a little resistance. So I'm on tens right now. So going down in string gauge, isn't a big deal. You, you will play where you're, uh, comfortable. You know what I mean? Uh, my logic is this. It doesn't matter what gauge strings you use. It doesn't matter if you can't bend them with any kind of, um, emotional feel, or if you can't feel comfortable bending, then it doesn't matter if that string technically is supposed to sound better, which I don't really buy into the whole strings. Um, you know, they, they matter on acoustics. They do matter on electrics, but again, mattering because a bigger string has a bigger sound and you not being able to play that bigger string, that that's two things you got to weigh out. And in my, my opinion, your technique will be more, more practical than the string gauge for your tone. So if it helps your technique, go with it. I don't see a pitfall. 
uh billy gibbons plays sevens right isn't that the whole thing <laughs> right um so uh here was a good question hold on a second how many wraps Oh, okay. Dan wants to know how many wraps did he wrap the string on the pole on a Telecaster? I like at least two wraps. That's how I like to think of it, right? So two full wraps and then the thing. Some players do three. I've always been okay with two. That's uh, that. And I have a, a video. I'll link it uh, right now when I do the index later of the four different major methods of restringing guitars. And that helps too, because sometimes you don't need any wraps. You know what I mean? Like I said, there's four methods. Uh, Working on guitars over the years, I found that no method is better than the other. You know, I've, I hear players tell me all the time, you know, oh, I would never restring my guitar the other way. But for every person who tells me one thing, somebody tells me something opposite, and uh, it all seems to work out. I, I found that there's there's definitely ways that work for you, but they don't necessarily mean that they're the law for everybody. Um, let me hit some more. Okay, so hold on. Got some more cool questions. Um, just want to do a thank you to BK. He just did a super chat. Uh, thank you for BK. That was awesome. Uh, it's like, thank you for the tip jar kind of thing. Uh, uh, Sarang says, thoughts on the new Ibanez RG1070 FM. I think it's the best Ibanez in years in terms of specs and, uh, and a lovely 11 piece neck. Well, I'm a big fan of Ibanez and the multi piece neck idea. I'm a big fan of multi piece necks because as a bass player, it's something that basses have been doing for way before the guitar players made it popular. Um, obviously, neck through bodies are nothing new, uh, for, but that's not what we're talking about. But I, you know, multi, multi piece necks were a big thing for neck through. Um, I like the idea. It just seems uh, seems great. Think about this. I love the Martin. You guys seen the Martin guitars that do the Formica, uh, Formica bodies, but they do the the ply neck. That's, I mean, I don't need 11 piece. I mean, it's it looks like a 50 piece neck. If you guys know what I'm talking about, uh, very stable. I like the idea. So yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of that. I found no downside for it for me. The necks feel really strong. They don't move a whole lot. A lot of the guitars I love. Uh, I play all the time, but man, the next move like crazy. It drives me nuts. So especially here where I live, it's so dry. And if it rains, the humidity just goes skyrocketing. And two days later, it dries all up. The necks tend to move a lot. So the multi-laminate necks really take, in a, take a lot of abuse, which is, you know, it's awesome. Uh, Adam says, I skipped. Hey, Adam, I didn't skip your super chat. What happens with super chats is I, I, I pin them. Uh, so hold on. Let's see. Why do you have a different name when you did the super chat? I don't see it. Hold on a second. Let me refresh. But thank you for letting me know. Guys, if you let me know if I miss anything like that, let me know. I try to get all those. I try to get the other. But I'm also trying to get the non-super chat questions. I'm trying to find interesting things that we can all talk about as, as well. And I know some of you guys uh, have some important questions, so you super chat them. And I think they're interesting. Uh, but... Uh, like I said, I'm trying to hit, I try to hit as many subjects. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Ice Pick 19 says the Martin XR Strata Bond, right? Yeah, right. It's, uh, is that what they call that? I never really paid attention if it had a name. To me, it was just a, like a, no different than a, than a, a laminate multiply, you know, kind of neck. Um, but just a lot of it. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Christopher says a super chat got, well, I'll, cry, I'll catch it, uh, Chris. He says a super chat got skipped last week, but it's cool. Well, let's find it. Here's a cool thing about super chats. I'm just going to tell you guys that right now. Super chats, the what I'm looking at, a screen I'm looking at is totally different than what you guys can see. You can't see the super chats the way I see them. Every super chat that's ever been sent to me since the dawn of super chats is actually in order uh, from the very beginning. So I can see any super chat. So you said last week, Christopher, you said there was last week where there was one. Let's find it real quick. Hopefully it was the same name. Because <laughs> uh, you know what it is? Usually it's the last one of the show that gets lost. Um, in fact, I would really, really, really like it if from now on, uh, I know, you know, we don't know sometimes when the show is going to end, but for the last 10 minutes of a show, I don't think we can do Super Chats anymore. Chris, I don't see it last week. Hmm. But I will look. I'll find it. 
Um, let me skip around so I don't so I can keep this flow going since there's 580 of us. Let me do uh, a couple announcements. I want to talk about some stuff first, real quick, before I go to questions. I want to I want to talk about um, um, I want to I want to talk about what happened with this week, and I'm going to put a link right now. So I got I did performance this week. I performed uh, with Larry Mitchell, and uh, that was very exciting for me. Uh, and uh, I thought uh, I thought I would share that with you. So what I did is I posted the first song is posted. Uh, the link is already on this video if you want to watch it of our performance. Um, it was really great. It was awesome. Basically, Larry sent me the uh, the um, some songs that he wanted to play. I listened to them, and then we went up and jammed them. With, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was great. So on that note. Uh, I thought I'd share that with you. So I posted one already. The rest will be posted so you guys can link them. Whether or not I put them as an actual video on the channel, I don't know yet. But I want anybody watching this to want to watch them, they can watch them. Okay. Let's see. Uh, next. Yeah. Tony says the jam on Instagram was awesome. Well, it was fun for me. You know, it was great. I want to thank everybody who came out. There was a lot of you guys that came out and hung out with us. Um, and uh, hopefully I got to meet all of you. I, I, I know I got to meet most of you. Um, thank you so much. So <laughs> Bud says his dog barks when my dog barks. I have a dog that just barks all the time. <laughs> so that's why I don't think there's a video I've ever had where there's not a dog barking. It just, uh, it, it, the dog barks all the time. So it's the, uh, it's good, right? No one can get like a hundred feet from my house without my dog going crazy. So, uh, Sean B 55 says, are you doing another super sharp on my axe series? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, yes. In fact, we have three that are all incomplete. Um, I'm trying to up the game on the sharp and the axe and it, I'm hoping it's going to work out, but man, it has been an amazing amount of work, uh, I don't even know how to explain the amount of work I put into these, just these last three episodes. Um, I hate promising stuff. It seems like I'm always saying stuff's going to happen and it doesn't, but uh, the sharp of my axe, there's, I'm, I'm, my whole goal is to start pumping them out uh, as soon as possible. And then once they start coming, they start coming quickly. So uh, one of them right now, the problem I'm having is it's six hours right now of footage that I'm trying to filter down to six hours total. It's just an insane amount of footage. That's the problem we're having because we went a little crazy with them. So hopefully you guys will enjoy what we have coming up. Um, okay. But so, you know, it's uh, it, and so, you know, uh, good news is we do have some sponsors from Sharp and Max now. So we have some help. We're, we're getting that done. Um, so that's good. Nothing huge, but definitely enough to get them done. Um, I want to answer some quick questions real quick. Uh, uh, Adam says best amp for the mayor, this John Mayer clean sound under $1,000. Thanks, Phil. You know, uh, Rabir and, uh, was it Matt? Is that who does it? I'm the, they do it on Anderton's. They do the, the rig, you know, how to sound like so-and-so for under so many dollars. They did a, how to sound like John Mayer. I, I concur hundred percent with that. They use the, uh, George Benson amp that definitely has that big clean sound. That's a hot rod deluxe, but, uh, George Benson had them do some modifications to it. A, a pine box, a Jensen speaker, and uh, a 100 watt Jensen speaker. So, a really high wattage speaker. So, it's harder for it to break up. And then they put a 12 AT7 in the V1 spot. Now, um, Adam, you can do that to a Hot Rod Deluxe. I have a video out there where you can pretty much just the tube will do a huge part of that. So, that's a good way to get the John Mayer clean sound. For me, if you want the cheapest, easiest way, I know he says under a thousand bucks. So, I mean, obviously, Fender amps are the John Mayer sound. Um, but uh, a compressor, I, John Mayer, when I hear his tone, it's always compressor to me, whether he's using, well, he's, he's notoriously no, uses the Rolls compressor, I understand, but whether he's using that or not, I always find if you really want to get that warmer, bigger sound, use the John, uh, use a compressor. That'll help uh, the amp uh, uh, get a fuller, because of those notes, to me, John Mayer's tone is in those big notes. You know, when he hits a note, it feels like almost like a chord in the fullness of the of it uh shawnee shawnee's a cubs fan why do i always have trouble with that name 
<laughs> Shawnee's a couple fan says, Hey, Phil, what do you think of the orange or OR 15? Got one last month and love it. Cheers from Chicago. Um, I tried one at the guitar center. I want to say about four or five months ago and I got it in my head. Maybe that's when I would go for an orange. Uh, I like the amp a lot, but obviously the Marshall way is the way I went. I ended up going Marshall, but you know, it was just a toss of a coin almost at that point. I could have gotten with the orange stuff. I really like the orange stuff. I mean, I really like it. I, the only point at this point, not having it is just cause I, you know, I, I have more amps than I kind of want right now. Uh, you know what I mean? There's no need to have, you know, as many amps. I don't use them all. So I like to have, you know, amps for specific things like a clean amp or an overdrive amp, you know, a couple amps like that. But, and then of course, anything I review or check out on the channel, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Sean says, Hey, Phil, I made it to Phoenix, uh, wa watching live at the local and local recently picked up SE custom 24 and zebra wood. I saw that the zebra wood top. Those are gorgeous. Uh, I may be crazy, but I think I can feel here the difference between Korea, Korea and Indonesia SE. Um, you know, it's a tough thing right now. So, you know, there, um, it's a mass exodus of guitar manufacturers go going out of Korea right now to Indonesia. I don't know what's going on with Korea, but it seems to be a big deal. Uh, they seem to be all leaving Korea for Indonesia. And, um, you know, I know some of us are kind of, I think what it is, is I feel the same way. Do you remember when we, everybody was like, it was Japanese guitars and then they started going overseas, or, no, overseas over to Korea and Indonesia. And you're like, oh, the Japanese ones, you know, to me, it's, to me, it's not so much Korea, Indonesia. For me, the problem is always, uh, it, I'm sorry, Indonesia, Japan, you know, with the Ibanez, the premium versus the prestigious. Sometimes I play them and I go, man, these premiums just don't feel like the prestige, but I hate it because you don't know how much of it's in your head. I can tell you this. I picked up so many Indonesian guitars and they sound, they felt and played fantastic and I couldn't tell a difference. So I don't know. It could be, it's could be possible. Who knows? Right. It's tough. I think all of us suffer from this. Uh, I think it's funny. It seems like a, it seems to be a common trait with guitar players. The whole, you know, we trust uh, we trust builders at some point, and then when they start changing stuff, it shakes our trust. That's really what that is, right? I look at think of it. Look look at it this way: when now that um, Paul Reed Smith guitars SEs have moved from world manufacturing in Korea, some a manufacturer that we have learned over the years to really trust to Indonesia to Court. Obviously, we trust Court but not to the not to the level we were trusting world manufacturing. So I think it's very logical for us to be skeptical of them. And, you know, so instead of just kind of blindly thinking the qualities there, you're going to have to learn to check it out. But worrying where guitars are made or where the brand is, is always going to be a fool's errand. That's why on this channel we want to focus on and we always focus on learning about the quality guitars and learning where the mistakes are. What my, my, my thought process for me has been when I look at mistakes on guitars, when I see a couple of mistakes, um, it's kind of like the beginning of what else was forgotten. You know what I mean? To me, if they, if they mess up the things you can see, then they probably messed up the things you can't see. It's, it's a good chance. So it's okay to be skeptical. It's your money. You work for it. You should do, you know what I mean? Uh, hold on. Somebody said something cool about Les Pauls. Hold on a second. Real quick, guys. Oh, happy, happy man 973 says, should I wait until the new Les Pauls come out or buy the current Les Paul? Any differences? Okay, so what I saw at the NAMM show, the new Les Pauls look a lot better. I would wait. So, you know, here's, here's my thing. If you can get a smoking deal on one of the older Les Pauls, the, the, the 2000, cause there's two now there's 2019 Les Pauls, right? You know, this is the first ones they released in mid year last year and the new ones. I think if you could get a deal and you can find one you like, maybe make the choice to do that. But if you're just going to go off paying face value, here's what I think. I think Gibson was in a lot of flux when they were about to file bankruptcy. And if you, any of you guys uh, out there know, I've ever experienced what it's like when you work for a company uh, uh, that has 
that's on, on its last, you know, leg, it's about to die. And the employees get a little weary of what to do. I think you see, you start getting dodgy results. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the Gibsons towards the end, uh, when it was uncertain at Gibson, what was happening, uh, weren't made to the best that those employees could do because, you know, everybody's worrying about, you know, where they're going to be working in three months. You know what I mean? It's not a really conducively great place to work. Uh, if you've ever had to that feeling of worrying if your job's going to be there in a couple weeks. So, uh, I, I would hold off. The new stuff looks great though. Uh, like I said, uh, in my, when I did my NAM sum up last week, I really, I was impressed with Gibson Epiphone. Uh, you know, it was kind of like I said, it was kind of like, I, I really think Gibson and Marshall and them are at least listening to the consumer markets now, uh, more so than just doing stuff. You know, uh, obviously Marshall uh, making some smaller amps, whether you guys think they're expensive or if you think they're, you know, a great price, doesn't matter. The point is they stopped making, uh, well, they didn't stop, but they're not focused on making refrigerators, Bluetooth and phone covers, making amplifiers. I think Gibson's learning the same logical lesson make guitars that's what we want everybody just wants a really nice gibson and a really nice marshall you know what i mean not everybody wants them but you know what i mean if you want one that's what you want you don't want goofy stuff from gibson or goofy stuff from marshall there's other companies that can provide crazy stuff uh how's it going what else do we got oh uh robert's got a question i really uh, i'm gonna answer it I hate it when I do this stuff. I'm kind of leaking information that I don't want to leak to you guys. Uh, he says, what's the chance of a wiring diagram vid? Well, okay. So let me tell you guys, uh, I kind of look at the live uh, QA and the, uh, and the, and this is also obviously a, a, a podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud as, as the community, you know, the smaller community at large. So uh, I feel okay telling you guys this one of the, uh, one of the sharpen my ax videos coming uh, is uh, called sharpen your ax. And uh, some of you guys, if you went to the Facebook page, the sharpen my ax Facebook page, and you check that out, you kind of have a, you kind of know what I'm about to say. Um, what ended up happening was one of the viewers that was going to have a sharpen my ax guitar done where they were going to send me a guitar and have me fix it up like I did in the other videos and send it back. We did something crazy. Uh, I assessed the issues with the guitar and I sent them all the tools and all the parts and then the videos and then they did all the work. And from that experience, uh, they were very successful. So that's why the video I think is going to be very enlightening for a lot of people. But for me, it was massively educational about the type of instructional videos that I should be making and thinking about. So I actually have been making tons and tons of videos. In fact, if you guys seen me dormant for the last couple of weeks, it's because the videos I'm making are not going to be put out uh, until they're all done. Because what I learned from that experience was the way Sharpen Max now and the way that my videos, my tech tip videos work now, is it's all over the place. It's just, here's how you do this. And here's a thought on that. And here's a quick tip on this. And, and I hope you guys enjoy that stuff. I sure enjoy making it. But I really seen the value now of showing somebody step A to step Z. So we are been creating videos that are exactly that. So when I launch them, you guys are going to get, you guys will know what's going to happen because I'm going to make a video. I'm going to already let you guys know right now. There'll be a video that comes out that says, please be understanding what's going to happen because then all of a sudden like 20 videos are going to launch at the same day and it's going to be series of repair videos. Um, and it's going to literally be step, you know, broken down. So if I take a two hour repair video, I'll break each section down on how to do it. And we learned that that was important because well, the person doing the repairs based on my videos really needed to see it step by step by step. So wiring, wiring diagrams, uh, all that stuff. So again, that's what I mean by it's been a massive undertaking because uh, this is uh, way more work than I uh, saw coming. <laughs> it's been, it's been, whoo, it's been great. <laughs> so there you go. I, I hope everybody enjoys it. I hope it works out great. Um, so there you go. Um, it's, it's great. So, uh, but that's what's going on. Uh, oh, okay. Shaw wants to know what's the blue strap behind me. The blue strap behind me, you're probably talking about this one right here is my bullet strat. And there's a video on that. It'll come out. I decided to put out the Marshall video first, uh, because, uh, you know, kind of like the Marshall just came out I and, mean, you know, you want to get as much excitement about the video you make as possible. Try to get as much views as you can. So it's new. And I thought I'd get it out there first. Uh, that should be the next video. 
uh, that'll be the one I, it's done so I can just release it. Uh, I'll put that out next. And uh, that's my Squire Bullet Strat. And what's great about that uh, video is that's the Strat um, that I had three years ago on my Squire versus Fender video. So I've had that bullet in my collection playing it. I just never had it in here. It's always been downstairs getting played. <laughs> so uh, it was in here because uh, I had it in the corner after I did the video and I finally put it up on the rack. So, yeah, Brian says, love the idea of the videos. I, you know what? I, I'm glad. Like I said, I, it's, it's, it's good. In fact, there's a whole series right now that's ready to go. Um, I just really, really need to tweak a couple things before I go. So that'll be the first one. So, and it really just depends on how we edit up that sharpen your ax, uh, which is the one where, you know, you, you know, where they're doing the work. Okay, let me hold on. I have some pin questions real quick. Let me get to some of those. We're doing. Hold on. Uh, we have Nick. What's up? Nick McAllister says, hey, I know Kiesels are made with CNC machines. Does that matter to you considering they aren't handmade? Does this affect quality? Um, well, I tried to buy. So you guys know I tried to buy my Kiesel today. <laughs> I, I uh, you know, it didn't work out. But uh, Monday, I'll try and do it again Monday. I had some time this morning. I thought it'd be perfect. I called them. What happens is a friend of mine, you guys may have known him. I mentioned him on the show. Nathan uh, has a friend that works there and he gave me his number. He's a sales guy. But he was busy and he couldn't come to the phone. So um, uh, so I'll try and do that. What I'm trying to do, I know we talked about the Kiesel and we talked about me trying to do it anonymously and stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to do about that. I came up with a different idea. Here's the idea I like. There's a color I want. I don't think they make it. So I'm going to try and see if they'll make me the color I want and then make it available to you guys. I don't know if you got, it'll work. If, I don't know. We'll see what we do. But I'm still, I try to get it. But back to the key, Kiesel thing, CNC machines. Do I think that uh, matters? Uh, versus handmade. Well, I've owned handmade guitars and uh, obviously everybody owns CNC machine guitars. Um, I appreciate, see, to me, guitars, I appreciate the workmanship. So I appreciate the hard work that a handmade instrument or handmade anything has. And uh, there's kind of a, I think, a, I talk about this, uh, for me, it's emotional versus kind of the logical, right? Logically, I think a CNC makes a better product. Emotionally, handmade just has a mystique, a magic to it, to know that somebody kind of, you know, this craftsman did it. Um, but handmade comes with a bunch of issues. And I don't mean negative, like uh, quality issues. I mean, inconsistencies, you know, you can't get two guitars to feel almost exactly the same. So I had, uh, I had a handmade guitar made once and it was great. And I wanted a backup and there was just really nowhere, no way to get the second one to feel exactly the same as the first one. It's really tough. So I don't, I don't mind guitars are made in CNC machines. I don't, I don't think it's a big deal at all. So I think for me, every, uh, this is a, practical thing for a lot of us out there. Uh, I have no problem where a guitar is made or, uh, you know, how it's made. If a guitar is made in China or if a guitar is made in America or if a guitar is made in UK, um, if it's CNC or handmade, I'm just aware of the costs, uh, you know, price differences. I expect to pay less for a Chinese made guitar than a US or UK made guitar because of labor rates and of course, OSHA laws. And, uh, and I expect, uh, that a, a CNC machine guitar uh, guitar should cost less than a handmade guitar. You know what I mean? Um, it's not always the case, but that's kind of the expectation you have because you kind of think that's how it's going to work. So uh, it makes sense, right? Somebody, what is it? Joe Rogan made a joke. He said that Lamborghinis are made by hand or Ferraris are made by hand, right? That's why they're so expensive. I don't know if it's true. I know nothing about cars, but uh, I'm not in sports cars. But, uh, but that's the whole point, right? A Ferrari is ex very expensive. If it's made by hand, I, I guess I understand the concept. It's made in a lower amount than let's say a Ford Taurus. So, uh, Mark's got a question says, is it worth it to remove a negative feedback resistor in my Fender custom deluxe reverb to get rid of the low hum or leave it alone? Thanks buddy. Oh, you know what? That's a really interesting question because you're not the first person to talk about this in like the last two months. So I wonder if there's something out there that you guys are seeing. Hmm. You know, is Lawrence, I know Lawrence is watching. Lawrence, you got an input on that? Let's see if Lawrence. 
you gotta i because i trust lawrence on this kind of stuff way 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 beyond my skill set so while we're waiting for lawrence to see if he's chiming in uh let's go to the next one uh okay david uh like the sound of the telly bridge pickup but prefer the strat body shape have you ever come across a strat guitar uh with a telly style copper plate pickup ever done any mods along with these lines you know i i'm sure it's out there i've never done it i've always done the opposite everybody always has me i've had i've put strat type pickups and humbucker pickups and tellies but i've never really put telly pickups in a strat um style guitar uh i'm sure it's out there you know um okay um so i don't know uh, you know what it is? It's tricky because it depends on how much of that tone you think comes from that pickup versus that type of telly bridge and that telly. Um, but I mean, I would imagine the pickup has a huge part of the sound. So, um, and then Lawrence chimed in. He says he's never heard of that mod before, but from the first listen, I don't think that it would work as expected. And um, so I would say, um, Mark, I trust Lawrence uh, I, I've never met a smarter guy when it comes to amps and pedals. So, and I'm, and there's a lot of smart people in this industry, but Lawrence is a cut above a lot of those guys. So I trust him. If he says whatever he's just said right now, uh, if he says he doesn't think he's going to work, uh, I wouldn't. So that's says walk your dog. It's good for both of you. Yeah, I know actually the dogs were just walked. So the UPS man is at Phil's house. It's possible. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's do, I want to do a couple of non, a non super chat. Uh, hold on. Okay, so Robert, this is a good question. It says, hey, he has a Blues Junior. One of the tubes is not burning as bright as the other tubes. Is it burning out? You know, here's the thing about this, Robert. I, I This is uh, some advice I got from an amp builder once, and I, I, I kind of, I've been using it ever since, and it's worked for me. Um, use your ears for your tubes. Uh, in other words, you know, because he goes, uh, he was talking about one day about pe musicians changing out tubes regularly. And... Uh, I was standing there and the question was, you know, how often should you change out your tubes? And his answer I thought was perfect. So I, I've stick with it. Um, use your ear. Uh, if you feel like your amp is weak, it's not putting out the right amount of output. If you feel like there's a kind of fizz in the amp that wasn't there before, if you're noticing sounds that aren't there, if you feel like your amp isn't sustaining correctly. If you feel, if you're hearing issues, then, then there's something to look at. But um, regardless of that, if your amps, you know, cause the question actually was asked to him, which I thought was great was my tubes were 20 years old. That was the question asked. My tubes are 20 years old. Should I change them? And his answer was, you know, there's a lot of people, he this is what he said. He said, a lot of people will probably tell you yes, but he goes, but if the amp sounds good, then, you know, you, you use the tube until they burn out. So, uh, that being said, I use that logic, except for the fact that there's microphonic tubes, there's all kinds of issues, but if your tube is, uh, uh, burning a little weak, which I've seen many times and i'm sure like i said lawrence can chime in on that too but i really just kind of go with my ears on a lot of stuff when it comes to musical gear using your ears is your best you know your best quality assurance method and i stick with that every time okay uh let's go back to another one we uh let's see Another thing, too, I wanted to let you guys know, on Instagram, I started doing this thing called Pick of the Day, which I've now changed to Today's Pick, where I talk about a guitar pick all the time. And today I did this grip scan, and I'm going to put that in the uh, video today. Um, it was really cool. It's not a sponsored video or anything, although they did send it out. Uh, I asked them to. I asked them if they'd send me some just to show you guys uh, the stuff because uh, a lot of you guys know I use Dava Picks. And this is a rubber coating you can put on any pick and kind of turn any pick into a Dava Pick for five bucks. So I thought that was cool. So I shared it with everyone today. So I put a link uh, on the on the video today. So I thought that would be cool to share with you. All right. And then on that note, the next question is from Is Shiny your your kid? Is Shiny you kid? Hey Phil, I want an amp 
uh, that can rock with, wait, hey, Phil, that's me. I want an amp that can rock with an amp gain, but also sounds good at apartment levels. Should I go with the Rocker 15 plus 112? Rocker 15 combo or Origin 20, uh, maybe another setup. Well, it depends on, these are questions that are always tough because it depends on the sound you're going after, right? Uh, I like the Origin 20, so you know, I really like that amp. Uh, in fact, somebody mentioned when I did the uh, shootout between the JCM 800 and the Silver Jubilee that they said, hey, if you, you know, try the Studio 20 uh, Plexi, you should compare it against the Origin. I would really like to do that because I really was impressed with both those amps. That's kind of why I went with the J. Every uh, kind of question that no one asked today, but asked on that video was why did I pick the 800? And I kind of talked about that last week. But another thing too was I'm still on the fence. You know, I, the DSL 20 is a great amp, but I kind of wanted the 800, a little less gainy, uh, a little bit more 80s crunch. It was kind of fun. So I, it was easy for me to cho choose this over the DSL 20, even though I think the DSL 20 having reverb was cool. This is just where I wanted to go with this. But the origin 20 versus the uh the the uh, plexi is a tough thing so uh the rocker 15's great i think i think you could get quieter tones out of the rocker though at an apartment level so you know if that helps you can get more gain at lower volumes because the plexi and the or which is the origin the origin really you got to crank it up a little bit i was it's really hard to get it quiet uh you know distorted if you're trying to get distortion uh rick's Yarbro says, hey, Phil, I've been uh, wanting to buy a Dane Electro guitar recently. Any specific models you could personally recommend? Pros and cons. Thanks. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm a big 59 fan. Uh, I have one. Let me turn it right there. That one right there. Love that one. Uh, hope hope to be getting the uh, new uh, anniversary blue uh, sparkle flake. But there's a new guitar, the 64X, um, that looks fantastic. That's, I think that's going to be the new, I think it's going to be Dane Electro's new look. I think it's going to be a thing. So they have these, which are kind of like the Mose Wright style guitars. And what they did is they took that design and they kind of changed it and they made a, a kind of a harder edge instead of the rounder edge. Really, really cool. Made in Korea. I went through when I was at the, I was at the Dane Electro booth going through all the guitars. I <laughs> kept flipping them to see all the Dane Electro guitars are still made in Korea. Every single one that I found at the show, there's probably some that are, aren't, but uh, everything that I could find was still made in Korea, which is really cool. So they're keeping the quality of keeping it in the Korea, kind of like we talked about earlier, you know, if it matters to you guys uh, and, and keeping that price point. So it's always weird to me, right? Some companies say that the Korean manufacturers, they, they're getting too expensive and the quality is getting tough. And then other manufacturers are there and they're fine. So it's really interesting. But those, I, if you're looking again at Dane Electro, I really like the two new ones. Um, I'm a pretty big Dane Electro fan. And, uh, and, uh, and I plan to do something cool because uh, Steve, the guy who owns uh, Dan Electro, is, he's so kind uh, every time I talk to him. He's just the nicest, nicest people over Dan Electro. And uh, I, I, like I told you, they kind of kind of alluded they want to send me the, the blue sparkle version of that. And if they do, I thought I would do something cool with this. Uh, not just a giveaway, but something cool. We'll do something exciting with it. So. All right. What else do we got going on? How are we doing on time? Oh, good. We still got 15 minutes. All right. And I already talked about the clinic tomorrow. I talked about the fact that I play with uh, Larry Mitchell. I went and saw Tony McAlpine this week. That was another thing that was cool this week. That's why I have no voice. So, so <laughs> uh, Tony McAlpine was amazing, by the way. Just amazing. He's on tour right now. Uh, so if you guys uh, were thinking about going to see him, definitely go and check out his tour schedule. If he's coming by, you go check him out. So he was super awesome. And you know, as great as I posted a picture of him on my Instagram and he was so nice. He actually commented on it and stuff. And that was just really cool. I mean, who's, you know, who does that? Who takes the time to, to say thank you to a fan and stuff. That was great. All righty. What else do we got going on? Uh, you guys got, there's almost 800 of us. Oh, Michael Shy. Hey, Michael. Thank you, Michael, for uh, catching that. Uh, he said, don't forget. I won't. Uh, don't forget that uh, to announce there's a future. The future of gear article series by Matt Blades. We put on the Ask Know Your Gear. Sorry, the knowyourgear.net website. It's a great series. 
of articles. I started reading it right before the show. So, uh, Mike, so, you know, and I was already really enjoying it. Uh, Matt, you did a fantastic, fantastic job. Uh, Matt and Michael uh, uh, work their butts off making the Know Your Gear website happen for you guys, you know, just giving you guys information, updates, just a place to get information, updates, see what's going on with either with the channel, with me, uh, but mostly it's about other stuff. Uh, they keep it about a lot of other stuff. I have very, uh, I put out a few things on there myself. I'll put out what I think is cool and stuff and they do their own thing. Um, it's not filtered by me. It's not controlled by me. They do crazy stuff on there that I love to see. And um, so guys, please check that out. And uh, that article series, they're trying to always, like I said, they're always trying to come up with something interesting and cool. Uh, I think they one up me, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> they should. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they're doing great ideas. Okay, so James has got a, a pedal order question. He says, I have a distortion pedal that I can also do clean boost, okay. Where would you put that along with a fuzz and some overdrive pedals? Um, that's a good question. I like fuzz before overdrive. This is my personal opinion. I like my fuzz pedals before my overdrive pedals because I'll run fuzz into overdrive. That to me is the very Eric Johnson, very slash thing to do. Run a fuzz pedal into a light overdrive. In other words, that's where they would run a fuzz into a Marshall. You know what I mean? So run a fuzz into overdrive. Uh, I'll put a boost usually before a fuzz, but I generally don't boost fuzz. If that makes any, uh, uh, you know, hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can, but I'm usually not going for the over the top fizz. Like, you know, I'm not going for the Weezer kind of crunchy, fizzy, cool, uh, fuzz. Not all the time. Uh, I'll use distortion when I do Weezer and stuff. But, uh, when I'm using fuzz, I'm trying to usually fake the Joe Bonamassa, Eric Johnson, or even slash tones where there's a mix fuzz and distortion well mostly overdrive really mixes in a way that always uh, i think a lot of players when you hear tones don't realize that's a fuzz pedal in fact anytime i hear any any musician a guitar player say why do they make so many fuzz pedals that's usually a sign that you don't uh you're not maybe aware of the fact that fuzz pedals are used all the time in a in a way that makes fuzz not sound fuzz fuzz is really used a lot by the way for lead tone you use fuzz uh, to thicken uh, a sound because because uh, a lot of players um, will use well like I said I'll, I use Eric Johnson because he's a really good ex an, uh, example he uses a, a lot of phrasings where he's not playing chords he'll play like two notes and those two notes that he's picking or he's he's kind of plucking those he wants it to f feel big like a chord so he uses a thicker tone where if you were to strum a big open chord, now it's just going to sound like muffled and, and horrible and fizzy. So that's why sometimes fuzz pedals are tricky. You know what I mean? Uh, obviously Hendrix, oh, I, should, I shouldn't leave out the King. Hendrix used fuzz into an overdrive. You know what I mean? That's just so. Uh, so for my opinion, uh, whatever it's worth, I use the fuzz into the overdrives uh, is how I do it. Haha, uh -huh. B Master. If you would uh, get to pick any Solar guitar, he's talking about Ola England's brand of Solar guitars, which model would you get? Uh, you know, I don't know the model name, but it's the yellow one. It's the fluorescent yellow flat, the fluorescent uh, yellow flat yellow, fluorescent yellow one by far. I wouldn't even hesitate, not even a second. That's the guitar I would get. So fantastic, fantastic instruments, by the way. If any of you guys are in the market for Solar guitars, I was really impressed with the quality of those. I'd love to get one on the channel. The problem is, is obviously all Eng Ola England, uh, Ola, you know, he's a small, he's a small builder. You know what I mean? He's a small, you know, he's got a, he's a small company. He really can't afford to send out guitars to YouTubers, which is sad. I wish he, he could, you know, uh, uh, and if you ever, you guys, anybody knows him, let him know. I would review a guitar at any minute, any day. No charge, of course. He doesn't have to give me a free guitar. Just ship me the guitar, and if he could pay the return shipping back to it, it'd be great. Um, that'd be awesome. So I would, I would definitely love to check that out and give you guys my thoughts on it. Um, since I've tried the Chapmans and stuff, and you know, might as well, you know. But his guitars just seem uh, a cut above. Does that make sense, then Chapmans? I mean, it's not that. Then, so you guys, please don't construe that as a dig against the Chapman guitars. You can be better if something's really good. <laughs> Right. So I'm not saying anything by saying that statement, but I'm just saying, I think it's perceptionally not even playing them. Just when you see the older guitars, they just have a, a, 
a very classy look to them. They remind me of the like Ornsby guitars and uh, uh, the Mayonnaise guitars and, uh, you know, all these kind of like really cool, you know, future looking guitars. And, and that's why I think a lot of companies out there are copying the designs now. Okay. We have another pin question. We have uh, Sean Brown says, HBDP, opinion on the little 59 for Strat. Uh, okay, so the little 59 for Strat is a great pickup. So for Strats, uh, he's talking about the Seymour Duncan little 59. For Strats, uh, as you guys know, in my Strat right there, my red one right there, I did a Sharpa Max where I did the same thing. I use a little pearly gates in the bridge. Um, the JB is a good pickup. Some people don't like it, but for the Strat, I would use the Pearly Gates and then the 59 and then the JB in that order. Uh, I just like the, uh, I like those, uh, the 59 and the Pearly Gates uh, mini uh, uh, Seymour Duncans in the Strat because if you're mixing them with single coils, I feel like they blend really well. The JB and the Hot Rails, they kick a little bit more. And so when you switch to the single coils, I really don't like it when I'm playing a humbucker and I switch to the single coil and I feel like all my volume just dropped off the planet. I don't want it to be so dramatic. It's tough. If you have a higher gain amplifier, you know, if you're playing like the Archon or if I'm playing the Supersonic with, oh, Supersonic, hey, I'm pointing at you guys, Supersonic with, uh, with a good amount of gain on it, you don't notice as much, but when you're running a low amount of gain or clean and all of a sudden you just feel like all the low end and all the volume just went away from your sound, it's a little, it's a little tricky. So I like the humbuckers to be a little lower output when I mix them with single coils. So I, with the little Seymour Duncan pickups, I follow the same rules I would follow with the bigger Seymour Duncan pickups, a uh, Pearly Gates in the bridge, a 59 in the bridge. If I was mixing with the uh, Seymour Duncan single coils or just single coils in general. Uh, Steve Long says, what nut is used on the Sterling Majesty? I can't find it on Google. Thanks. Uh, I'm, okay, so I'm pretty sure that's the um, uh, Irvana nut, right? Let's, uh, so Irvana, ear, like, uh, I think it's all phonetically, right? Let's E-A-R-Vana, N-A, something. Let's see if we're, and look at that. Comes right up, and uh, I'll share with you guys. Uh, please keep in mind, I am not a expert of those guitars i don't have a majesty uh but i hope that helps you that's what i think it is <laughs> uh is that and if it's not that it's some version of that but that's uh, the irvana uh, if you're not familiar with this company uh the my understanding of the story goes something like this if you guys are familiar with the um the buzz feetin system or fighting system i always call it buzz feetin um could be Fetten system, who knows, buzz feeding system, uh, which is a, a system that obviously you cut the nut in a way that helps uh, better intonation. And so I think Irvana was, because what happens, you couldn't you couldn't buy a buzz feeding nut. What happened was um, you would just, uh, you as a, as a tech or a luthier, you would go to his, his, his place and he, you would become certified in the in the way of doing it and they were levels i think one two and three something like that and so people would bring the guitar to you now washburn and a couple companies started doing it to their guitars uh because obviously they would learn the system and do it at the factory but the irvana system is something that you can buy and drop in and just drop in so and i've installed the irvana systems uh so i would imagine it's got to be the same thing so and if it's not it's close enough to get you there i promise and then sasu says thank you for your content phil Thank you, Sassu. I appreciate that. How do I find a good guitar tech luthier in my area? Uh, any certs or anything like that? I uh, should know. Okay, so here's here's a funny thing. I find uh, the the best thing to follow is just remember a couple of rules. Guitar techs, luthiers are all self proclaimed. You don't right. You can go to school and you can get a certificate. Um, there's great schools out there. Roberto Venn's one of them. They're here local in my town. Um, and uh, you can go there and you can get a uh, a uh, you know, a certificate on it and you can learn. But a uh, most, uh, look at Paul Reed Smith, most uh, luthiers, most repair guys, uh, they just started doing it. It's like, you know, right? They're like me. I just started doing the work and then, you know, uh, word of mouth. So what's great is usually is you want to trust the word of mouth, you know, use your friends and resources. Uh, if you don't have any friends that play guitar, or you don't have any resources like that, it's a little tricky. So you definitely want to use somebody who can give you some kind of guarantee 
uh, in the idea of uh, their work experience. So something that can be quantified. So my advice to you is do exactly what you would do for uh, anything that, you know, like a guitar, you love it, right? Anything that you do, you love, go ahead and just take, do your due diligence. Uh, ask around, get some good recommendations, try a store out, check them out. Um, ask them questions. If you're not really uh, savvy and you don't know what to ask, I understand that. Maybe that'd be a good video for us. I did a video about questions you should ask guitar teachers. Maybe I'll have a video. Would that help you guys? The other thing you can do too is, uh, and I'll put a link when I do the indexing on the website, on the knowyourgear.net website, there's a downloads page, if you guys don't know. And on there, everything I've ever sheets that I've given on any videos, like how to inspect a guitar sheet, the 55 Sweetwater uh, inspection, the entire Sweetwater's entire 55 point inspection sheet is on my website you can download that for free now it's available now on sweetwater because after i did the review of sweetwater uh the guitar and their 55 point inspection sweetwater decided to publicly announce the 55 point inspection they had never done that before they reached out to me and said hey we'd like to actually tell people what it is um but on there there's all kinds of stuff and there's also the questionnaire for the teachers um i would highly recommend you download one of those sheets because the best, like I said, the best way to be a good consumer is to be an informed consumer. So the best way to make sure that your tech is any good is to learn a little bit yourself. You want to be educated so that you know what it is because it's going to be tough. A lot of times you could have the opposite. You could give a, I've seen this. I know great techs, just amazing luthiers, but you, you know, and people go, oh, they're horrible. And, and a lot of times because a person has no idea what they're supposed to be looking at. So, you know, it's sometimes it's tough, you know what I mean? So uh, you can check that sheet out or, and again, uh, maybe that's something I could look at doing. Maybe I never thought about doing a video like that, but that'd be a cool video. Like what would I ask a tech or how would you quantify uh, somebody's experience besides uh, schooling? Cause schooling is only so much of it. And there's a lot, of, and most of the techs out there uh, and luthiers are not, uh, not schooled, right? They hard knocks, the world of hard knocks. If you guys remember, I've told you guys before how I learned all my skills was I started, I was building guitars and I started having guitars imported from China and they like to ship me hundreds of really bad instruments and I didn't want to lose all my money. So I learned to work on them at, uh, as fast and as good as possible. And that's really what made me fast at it because you can't spend an hour on each instrument when you have 400 to get through, you know uh doc 8404 says my wife is letting me purchase a solar for valentine's this year uh that's awesome <laughs> right uh uh would have no problem sending it to you uh so you can so i can give it a go i'll pay the ship both ways you know doc that is really really kind of you and some of you guys have done that in the past and some of you offered to do that in the past um i i I want to take you up on it, but I also feel bad taking your instrument away for a period of time. Uh, but if you want to reach out to me at pmcknight7 at gmail.com, we can get a dialogue going. And if we can make it work, I'd like to, you know, I, I take you up on it. We can figure something out. Um, again, it, it's, I'd like to do it in a way that when we do it, I can get it and get it right back to you. You know what I mean? So it needs to be in a situation where I can have it and maybe have it for two days tops. Cause you know, again, I don't want to take anybody's guitar for a long period of time. Um, and I also, I, I got to make sure that I don't have other obligations when he sh shows up because stuff can show up and sit here for weeks before I have time to get to it. So, and, uh, so yeah, if we can work that out, that'd be great. I, I like I said, I, it'd be really cool. Um, okay. The Apple smasher. I think this guy doesn't like Mac computers. I don't, I mean, I don't know why he would hate fruit. The Apple smasher. I'm not thinking you're a. You're a PC guy. <laughs> All right. Anyways, says your thoughts on Fedora bases and four versus five string. Well, Fedora bases are amazing. They're just 10 grand. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, what I want a Victor Wooten Yin Yang Fedora base or a Monarch Fedora base. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a bolt on guy. In fact, when I had Warwick custom build my base, even though that model, my Warwick model comes, I think standard neck through and I ordered it bolt on. So in Fedora world, I like the Monarch, uh, even though I think they have a bolt on and a neck through version of the Monarch, right? Love that body style. Uh, love Fedora. Super expensive. I've never tried their guitars. You see, they got their guitars now on Sweetwater, but you're talking about basses, but just letting the guitar players know. If you want to know what we're talking about, you can go to sweetwater.com and check out Fedora, F-O-D-E-R-A. Uh, guitars and basses. The guitars are 
same thing, like six thousand dollars. Um, so love them. That's easy. Four versus five string. Yeah, I played five string forever, and I switched back to four. And uh, uh, you know, you know what it is? It, it's it's this. It's kind of like my Warwick when I played with uh, Larry last night at the show. If you watch the video, like I said, link in the description. Um, that's a thirty-two inch scale four string bass. So. Uh, you can tell in the video, the tone is huge. I had a, a really nice thick bass tone, uh, at the show. I was playing my Hughes and Kittner acoustic amp. Yep. Uh, acoustic guitar amp. The Hughes and Kittner guys sent that to me and I've been using it in videos and, uh, I wanted it cause I liked it at the GitCon. So they said, I, I said, Hey, yeah, if you want to send it to me, I'll check it out. So I played my bass through it and, um, and, uh, uh, so to me, I've kind of learned I can play a four string and I can play a 30 second scale bass and I can get away with murder. In other words, I can, you know, uh, in fact, it was cool. The band we opened for Bridget Purdy, who is just an amazing blues band, by the way, she's got pipes. You know, she was a backup singer for the who before, you know, she's uh, started venturing out and doing her own thing now. And, uh, she, the band was amazing, but the bass player, he was, he was fantastic. And one of the things he said, it was, man, your bass is little. <laughs> He's like, oh, and I said, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. So I've learned, uh, five strings, great. Six strings, great. I used to play a seven string Conklin bass for years. Uh, and, uh, that was 35 inch scale, I think. Cause I had a, a, a Conklin, not the court one, but the actual Conklin. And, uh, what I learned was, you know, why are you working so hard? So I kind of, figured out what's the what's the least I can get, you know, and, and get the most out of it. So for me, it's a four string 30 second scale. So why well, work so hard? My hands don't get fatigued. I feel pretty comfortable. I don't have to think about anything when I'm playing. It's good. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, all right. It is four o'clock. Let's see if we can grab one more question before we go. I think I did all my announcements, right? I talked about Kiesel. I don't know if I told you, but today, uh, tonight in two hours, I'm going to be on Cheddar Kung Pao's channel talking about NAMM show. Cheddar was at the NAMM show. I was at the NAMM show. I think he's going to have a bunch of people come on and talk about the NAMM show. He asked me if I'd pop on. As you guys know, I'm friends with Cheddar. He's a good guy. So I said, yeah, I'll pop on and talk guitar with you. It seems like a cool thing to do. So if you guys have nothing to do, check out Cheddar's uh, channel and, and watch us all talk about guitar. And, uh, and then on that, uh, check out the all the links I put in the description. And then uh, any suggestions you guys have for next week's 100th episode and 200,000 subscribers. Uh, and uh, maybe we figure something out. The dog's excited about it, as you can tell. So I think that's why the dog's barking every time I mention that. So, and uh, Metal Fender Guy just did a super chat. I appreciate that. Uh, and last question I'm going to go with is is i'm waiting for the next question the next i'm just gonna grab the next question here it is hey philip i was wondering what's the difference between a squire vintage modified jaguar seymour duncan pickups and the v mod pickups um okay that's a good question specifically i don't know so let's look uh the v mod pickups i think are different magnets right isn't that the whole thing about the v mod pickups they're using like an alnico 5 uh, I want to double check this because see, that's why I thought it'd be fun to answer a question that I couldn't even had time. To, okay. V mod pickups. Uh, and you said for the Jaguar, right? You might've said jazz master. Hold on a second. Let's get that right. We're going to do this. Let's do it right. Jaguar. I was right. Okay. So V mods pick up on the Jaguar. I'm uh, looking at the specs right now. I'll share with you guys as soon as I see. Okay, and we're going to look at them and compare them to the Seymour Duncan set. Here's my screen share. I just went on to Sweetwater. And uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Alnico 5s. Okay. That's what I'm curious about. I'm really curious. And we'll do Seymour Duncan. Duncan. Jaguar pickups. Because I don't know why, but I'm thinking oh, those are the antiquities. Oh, for some reason. It, okay, let's fix this. Hey, Sweetwater's got both. Look at that. All righty. This is an antiquity pickup, but I'm going to go with it. El Nico, too. I was right. Oh, good. Okay. So that would be the big difference. Uh, El Nico 5s in the V mods, El Nico 2s in the. Uh, Seymour Duncan's, there could be all kinds of voicing differences and all kinds of things going on, but here's what I want to talk about. 
So the Alnico 5, the way I look at magnets is real simple. There's going to be Alnico 2, Alnico 5, Alnico 8. Uh, those are the, uh, the way. There's all kinds of differences, and especially because the quality of the magnet, not only just the type, but the quality, if the, if the magnet has chips or cuts in it, it has issues, there's going to be a big thing. But the way I look at it is Alnico 5 will take a stronger degaussing or a metal, um, uh, metal um, uh, a magnetic charge than the Alnico 2. So it's not so much it's a hotter pickup. You're just going to have more magnetic energy it gives it a different thing i'm a pref i prefer uh lower output pickups but i kind of I, I my ear tends to gravitate towards el nico 5 um but pickups are a scary thing because every time i think i have a really really good opinion of a pickup somebody gives me a pickup and a guitar i play it and i'm wrong and i think that happens to the best of us so uh i think any pickup can made, be made to sound good but without hearing one without comparing one just using a general guideline i generally like the alnico five over fours or twos why don't i say four twos and uh, so i'm curious i would think the v mods are gonna be cool so i don't know and i'm a seymour duncan guy i like seymour duncan a lot so and then because you guys did a couple last minute super chats no more super chats please <laughs> so we can get uh oh uh, hardcore guitars just want to do super chat say congratulations on the hundred uh, 100 episode, 200,000 subscribers. We're not there yet. We're just right there. It's next week. But yes, thank you for that. Patrick did a super chat and so did Reggie Wooten. Thanks, Reggie. Um, you guys are awesome as always. And uh, we'll talk soon. And uh, until next week, I'm just going to say know your gear.